I often get asked why I go through the effort of making these videos, and yeah, occasionally there's a bit of money when people watch my videos, click the affiliate links and make a purchase, but it's not enough to sustain me or my family, I still have a job. The real reason for me is because I get to play with cool stuff long before anybody else, and it's incredibly fun. So hi, I'm Ross, and this is Fohammer Videos. So why am I excited about this one? Well. Unlike those brands that you've already heard of, the main top three slash four that everybody knows, these guys aren't just upping the resolution number. I've said in many videos, when it comes to resolution, yeah, 4K, 8K, 12K now, that doesn't really mean anything. You need to determine what the pixel size is by getting that resolution and comparing it to the screen size. And even then, you've got printers as low as 19 microns, which is incredibly precise. But as I've shown and all but proven, unless you've got very specific high detail and normally quite brittle resins, you won't even see that difference on most printers. So yeah, I'm gonna go out there and say that's kinda pointless. Anything below 35 microns is, it's minimal at best. And if you can see it, well done. So that's why even at the 33 microns that this outputs, you shouldn't just absentmindedly turn away. Trust me, pay attention, because this is potentially the future of 3D printing. But I need to preface that this isn't a review. It can't be a review. I got a prototype version of this printer, so I can't review what you're going to get at retail. I have been told that closer to release, I will get this printer swapped out with a retail version, so I'll come back and do the review later. But let me show you what I've learned so far and what this printer promises to do because the idea is to make 3D printing much easier for everyone. You might be wondering who Hay Gears are, and that's fair enough, because there have been talk of some scams around the 3D printers scene at the moment, especially on the likes of Kickstarter. But Hay Gears has a solid background in industrial printing. Before this printer, they specialised in dental and prosthetics, so that gives you an idea of where they're coming from. If you want to buy one of their previous printers, they are the kind of thing where you need to call up, get an account manager, and only have a price on request of ordering dozens of them. The long story short is neither you or I could probably afford one. But what's really great is they're bringing that industrial knowledge and the quality of the components into this printer according to the press brief that I received. And yeah, I can believe that. Just looking at this printer tells you how much they put into taking care of a product. This isn't just a bit of glitz and glamour, this is a next level entirely. This feels like an industrial unit, but at a fraction of the cost. But in order to actually make something new and more beneficial to us, they've gone above and beyond what most manufacturers do to not just give us a new printer with some new features where they've designed out a lot of the challenges that we typically have, they've given us a whole printing and cleaning platform in order for them to build from and for us to print on. The be all and end all here is they aim to give us commercial grade results, but with very little effort put in on our part. They're gonna take care of everything for us. So what exactly is that? Well, the first thing we need to talk about, what is the biggest problem with 3D printing? And having now run this channel for, it's gotta be a year or so, one of the things I do get to see is all of the complaints and problems that people have with 3D printing. And the biggest issue that everybody seems to have is getting the correct exposure settings. And here's where Hay Gears fix that. Not only do they give you their platform, which automatically and apparently uses AI, which I think is just a bit of a buzzword now for anything where the computer does it, but they use certain algorithms to orient and support your model for the best results. And then typically, when it comes to actually getting those results, you've got to dial in your printer and do all that, depending on what resin you use, what temperature it is, and what alignment satin is to Uranus or something like that. But this printer works differently. Instead, they give you a choice of resins, their own resins, proprietary resins, that you can use with it. And in this case, I got three. I got PAU10, which is used for more robust components that can do with a bit of knocking, which is really good for miniatures. But then they've also got their PAM or PAM10, which is a little bit more robust and gives you sharper details. But in my experience, this has also given me pretty decent and still flexible and bendy miniatures. They're quite sturdy. 
and then they have Pat 10, which is transparent. And well, I haven't tested it yet because I haven't really got a project where I need a transparent resin. If you can think of one, a good one, let me know down in the comments what I should do. And the cool thing about this resin is that it comes in very specifically shaped bottles in order to just have the cap unscrewed, shaken up a bit so that it's mixed, and then it goes and slots into the back of the printer to steadily feed itself into the printing bag. When you want to remove it, just lift it out, and there's a socket inside which closes a valve and stops it leaking. You need to hold it for a couple of seconds just so the dregs fall into the vat, but once you've done that, you can just move it out, clean the vat, and move a new resin in. But this is where they've nailed it. And don't get me wrong, yeah, I get this isn't for everybody. Some people want to have choice, but other people, and me to a degree, want a printer that just works. And if that's you, then this is where they've nailed it here. Because they know the resin you're using, all you need to do is drop a model into the slicer, say, hey, orient and support this, tell it what resin you want to use, and it'll do everything for you and result in a perfect print. And I've been trying this out for a few weeks, and this is why it's not a review. Look, there's still some tweaking to do at this point, but I want to say that unlike other brands who are actually out there selling printers, Hagias haven't even released this printer to the public yet, but they've been so engaging when I've been giving them feedback. And that gives me a lot of positive vibes that, yeah, this is going to be a hell of a success when it comes out. In its early days yet, but just the fact that unlike other brands, which if you've watched my other videos, you know who I'm talking about. Unlike those other brands, when I sent Hagears a list of questions, it's actually ended up in a WhatsApp group between me and about, I don't know, maybe 10, 20 of their techs. It feels like that sometimes. Might just be two or three of them. But either way, we're in a WhatsApp chat and I just bombarded them with questions. What about this? What about that? How does this work? What about that? And they collated all that into an email for me and gave me detailed answers to the point where it actually blew my mind and confused me quite a bit. But I mean that in the best way. Basically, they really do know what they're talking about much more than I do. At the end of the day, I use these things. These guys, these guys make them and they make some incredibly impressive ones too. But just to have a play now, I printed my usual Wolverine bust, which unlike I've done on other printers, in this case was actually put into the slicer, hollowed, put holes in, and supported all on their web platform. And there was no need to muck around with USB sticks because I didn't get one. From their platform, you just go send to printer, and it goes to the printer and then prints. Again, it's just another one of those minor convenience features that a lot of people might find worth paying for. And the quality that came out was, yeah, pretty damn solid. Like, I wouldn't compare this to any of my other prints and in any way say that this is bad. It's far from bad. It's a very good print. I also printed up some pre-supported miniatures from Creature Caster because I'm just loving Creature Caster's sculpts at the moment. And yeah, check them out. They're fantastic. These did take a little bit of tweaking, but only because this printer has been focused a lot more on larger models than pre-supported miniatures. The printer would actually very much prefer to support these models itself. But after a conversation with Hay Gears, they told me what to run through and run a couple of repairs on the models. Again, not something you'd get in any other slicer, but on this slicer because it's still being worked on, just another step we had to go through. And this is something that's gonna be fixed when they release their PC application, their desktop application later on. But to really test this printer in the early stages, I wanted to actually do what they said it could do and print some production parts. And it just so happened that right before I started testing this printer, I got a call from the guys at Mini Wargaming who asked me if I could 3D print some of the, the damned models in order to go out to painters in the UK for their Kickstarter campaign run alongside Wargames Atlantic. And considering those models are going to be in hips plastic and come on sprues, it's incredible that I was able to get them off this printer in the same quality you would expect to get from the final production pieces. And to do this was, it was really no effort at all. It was just a case of load it into the slicer and click print. And like I said before, because they know what resin you're using and how that resin works, they can actually use that to already know things like your exposure settings, your best lift speed, and the printer's got a built-in heater, so even in cold temperatures, it can bring it up to temperature too. 
And when it came to leveling, well, this amazed me. Not only is the build plate incredibly well built, this thing is solid and heavy and exactly what you'd expect from an industrial quality unit. But there's no real leveling to do. If it ever goes out of alignment, you can tweak it, which I did just to have a play and figure out how it worked. But this has actually got a sensor on it that tells you what each corner of the build plate is down to like 0 0.00 millimeters. That's incredibly accurate. And I also want to give a quick shout out to the miniature hobbyist because it turns out we were actually talking about something else entirely and it turns out that we're the two miniatures guys in the UK that have actually got hands on with this. So it was cool to speak to him and we could actually work on similar projects together at the same time. So in order to see how he got on with it, go and check out his channel and I'll pop a link in the description below. And before I finish off, I also want to talk about their wash and cure stations. Again, this is quite an original approach. Now, already the wash station is a little bit mental and crazy, but it's fun. Instead of it having an impeller or some kind of vibration to clean your models, it actually shakes the entire vat. Honestly, it's kind of fun to watch because it's doing a bit of a little dance. But when you're getting the models out of this, you don't actually have to put your hand into all the cleaning fluid. All you do, you get two tubs with it, you sit one on top of the other, and then you just open a valve to flush all the liquid through to the bottom container. Just make sure when you're done, you close the valve because the next time you do it and swap the containers around, look, you know what happened. I didn't get it on camera and yeah, it happened everywhere. And the cure station, well, it's a cure station. I mean, at the end of the day, I'm a guy who's been putting some of my prints out in the sun, and my first cure station was a paint tin with UV LED strips inside. So for me, I'm normally happy if one of these works. But my favorite things about it include, well, the inside is completely mirrored, so you get a much more uniform spread than just having a colored lid over the top to protect your eyes from the UV rays. But two, it opens at the front. Like, I don't know, ever since I've had one of these, the idea of something going on a turntable's always reminded me of a microwave, and it's just made more sense that it should open at the front and allow you to put models into it, as opposed to keep lifting these and putting these lids everywhere, because that does my head in. And I know it's a tiny thing and it's not gonna make this suddenly worth hundreds of pounds, but you know what? I like that they've done it because this is a better way to have a UV curing station. And it's also worth noting, and I've no idea why yet because I've not done it and I've not tested it, but both the cleaning station and the curing station can connect to Wi-Fi. I, I don't know why, maybe it's for firmware updates, but I, I don't know what firmware updates you're gonna need. It, it's fun though, the fact that they're putting this much into it, I don't know, let's see what comes out of that. And that's the whole thing with this. Keep watching because this is possibly the most innovative, exciting printer that I've ever seen. And like I said, it's early days. I'm quite impressed. There are things to do. And the good thing is that Hey Gears, myself, we are talking. I'm giving them more of an insight into the miniatures side of the 3D printing hobby that maybe they didn't have before. And they're answering all my questions in incredible detail. So they clearly want to do the best with this printer rather than just make something and ship as many as they possibly can. But I think the main reason to keep an eye on this is very much like something like the Anker Make M5, which I talked about. It's probably not for everybody, but if this is within your budget and you want something that's just plug and print more so than anything else, and you don't want to muck around with settings, you just want to put resin in and get the best results you possibly can, then yeah, definitely keep an eye on this. It's up for pre-order now. If you could and you're interested in pre-ordering it, I really would appreciate it if you would click my links down below and then I'll make a commission at no additional cost to you. And they have got this on at a special pre-order price before they start shipping it. So it's very much worth having a look now if you're interested before the price goes up after release. As I've said though, I will be doing a full review of this when I get hands on with a production model closer to release. So make sure you don't miss that. Click the subscribe button. And if this was helpful or exciting to you, like it was for me, then click that like button and drop a comment down below. Let me know why you're interested in this printer. For me, more than anything, I just like the fact that somebody is actually giving us meaningful innovations with 3D printers 
and it looks like that's hay gears right now. And some others, but this video is about hay gears. Anyway, I want to say thanks to our patrons, and if you would consider joining us, then please, the links are down below, and get your name up in the credits. That supports us and helps us make more content like this. I really want to thank you for taking the time to watch this because it's a little bit different. It's not a review for one. So again, thanks. So until next time, stay excited about upcoming printers, be excellent to each other. See you guys. Fohammer out.